Hello everyone and welcome to Galaxy H9 Cars. Now as you know I live in the UK which means that pretty much all year round it's soaking wet and dirty and filthy here on the roads. That's times by two or maybe even ten in the winter. So I've come down to TK Detailing Cars today in Basingstoke to have my car sorted out. But first of all let's take a look at the car and why I need to have what it's having done. So if we take a look at the back you can see what I'm talking about. Absolutely filthy. Not quite as bad as some of the cars I saw coming down today, which were, you couldn't even see the number plates. But on the front, I believe it or not, this has what's known as scorpion black metallic paint with some sort of like reddy, goldy metallic hints in it. And at the moment, it's just totally impossible to see any of that whatsoever. So I thought it would be a good idea to catch up with Tom, who's the owner and operator of TK Detail and Cars, to talk about a little bit of what about we're doing today and why we're doing it. Yeah, so uh, Andrew's Cars came in and we're going to do a fireball uh, protection detail. First up, we're going to wash, decontaminate the car, so that, that includes iron, doing an iron removal. Once the car's then dried, we put it inside, give it a clay bar to remove any decontaminants uh, what have uh, bonded to the paintwork. Paintwork then be inspected, have a single stage machine polish before we lay down any protection. Uh, we'll go through all the process each, uh, each, with each one. Okay, okay, great. So what's the first step? First step is to uh, clean the wheels once, mm -hmm. uh, then we then roll the car, uh, wheels get cleaned again, mm -hmm. then decontaminated, and then we actually start the pro uh, wash process on the rest of the car. Okay, okay. Great. So what's the purpose of the decontamination in the first stage? Uh, you decontaminate the paintwork uh, to make sure it's perfectly clean before uh, putting uh, the protection on there. Because otherwise you'll have a layer of dirt, then you're putting protection over dirt. So uh, this often happens when you buy a new car. The, cu the paintwork's not perfectly decontaminated. So then they put a protection on the car um, and then you're protecting and bonding dirt deeper into the car first. After degreasing and then drying the engine bay, it was time to apply the pre-wash spray. This time of year is very important to use really, because you're breaking down uh, any of the dark dirt particles, anything was bonded before. Uh, it does an extra stage, you definitely do this time of year, um, before you put anything on the paint. Yeah, so then the snow flame will go on after this is just an extra. So I'm already starting to notice the pure attention to detail that goes into cleaning cars at TK Detailing. So Tom, the manager, asked me to move the car forward slightly so I could rotate the wheels and free up the part of the caliper on the brakes that hadn't already been cleaned. As you've seen before, I've had my car cleaned at a few places and I've never seen that step. So it removes um, forest iron particles which are broken down from the brake pads and discs and bits like that when they're and they bonds to the wheels so it's another stage a de another decontamination stage so doing that on the wheels um, so then when it's moved inside when we give them a panel wipe down ready to be um, sealed after washing off the ferrous metal remover from the wheels Tom applied the now famous snow foam to further dislodge grit and other contaminants from the paintwork even using different brushes to access the slightest areas This was then washed off in preparation for shampoo. Um, so after having a pre-wash and a snow foam pre-wash, um, the lower part of the car, I'm still not happy, happy with. It's still got some road salt and slightly dirty. Um, it may be where we haven't left the snow foam on long enough. Um, so what we're going to do is pre-wash the lower half of the car again. So I don't want to put a mitt on the car, so less you're more likely to cause damage, you know, wash marring and micro scratching and bits. After a successful second pre-wash and snow foam application, it was time to use the three bucket method to mitt wash the car. Yeah, so the importance of having using the three bucket method, so you have one for wheels, one win, rinse, one wash. Using a single bucket and then you're having the suds, put it on the paint, put it straight in your bucket, you're then cleaning it slightly but putting dirty water back on the car. So having a rinse and wash bucket, 
you're dunking the dirty water in there, cleaning it off, and then going straight into a clean bucket and putting clean suds back on the car each time. Um, very, very important uh, to um, create less marring um, and yeah, have an overall cleaner finish. Before washing off the shampoo, the guys literally manipulated it into every possible space, both out and inside. Next, Tom applied the ferrous metal removal spray to the bodywork. So the same as what we did on the wheels, where you're putting an iron remover on, uh, you're doing exactly the same in the paintworks, it still bonds to anything on the car. Uh, this is a part of the decontamination process. So we do this before we start actually claying it. So this gets put on, left for a few minutes and then uh, rinsed off uh, before it goes back inside to be uh, clay barred. After rinsing the ferrous metal remover off, the guys started drying the car. So, from years on using an old chamois lever, uh, then there's Mike 5 drying towels. The reason why these are better to use is uh, a deeper pile on the cloth. Um, so, dirt particles or anything gets trapped in, goes deeper in now. On a, on a lever, or especially on a water blade, you're then dragging that across the paint, which will cause scratching. Um, so using uh, microfiber towels, or these are made by Fireball, uh, they're, they're twisted drying towels. You can actually then just wipe, or you pack dry a car, uh, you're less likely to cause any damage. So on these towels, you can actually just walk across and dry the section off, or pack dry. And then you're not dragging water and dirt particles along the car. So we've just finished the wash and drying off stage. I'm just gonna give you a quick update on how the paint looks now. On the rear, the paint is already unbelievably reflective, if you can see that. It's all pretty nice and clean down here. On the side, the wheels, significantly better. And all of that is just from the first stage, just the washing and drying. There's still a lot to do, clay barring, the ceramic coating itself, the paint correction. I cannot wait to see how the car is going to look when we're finished. So we just brought the car into the detailing bay. As you can see, pretty nice company sitting next to it. Uh, so the car's being all washed um, and decontaminated as far as you can outside. Mm. Now brought inside with clay bar the car just to remove any um, contaminants that were bonded to the paintwork. Uh, this is really um, a necessity to do before we start machine polishing the car because uh, anything that's bonded on the paintwork we end up just keep pushing it into the, into the paint uh, clear coat, so this is very, very important to do anything before you start correcting the paintwork. So what does that sound? Uh, that's the contaminates, uh, contaminants what are bonded to the uh, clear coat. So what we're doing is clay bars actually just we're cleaning that off out of the clear coat uh, before you machine polish. So if we go over it again now, they're slowly going away. Looking on the side, we look at the clay, you can see there's quite a significant amount of dirt contaminants that have come off from it. Car inside, clay barred and dried off. Next up, it was time to inspect the paintwork for defects. So using different lights, uh, we go around the car and inspect the paintwork, uh, specifically looking out for any hologramming, marring, or swells in the paint. What's hologramming, swearing, and marring? Uh, they're caused by wash technique, uh, sometimes caused by 
uh, incorrect uh, polishing techniques and bits. So what you do, you're doing then is we machine polish uh, any of the imperfections out of the paint so you have a perfectly flat surface. Um, so we go through that bit in a second. We need to mask the car off and get ready for that. We'll go around and check out some of the defects in the paintwork at the moment. That bit you call paint marring, um, where something abrasive is run across the paintwork. So if the, if the car had no swell marks on there and you're using a microfiber which wasn't completely clean or something and wiped it across, you'd end up getting paint uh, marring. It's like a shimmer in the light. Um, sometimes you get it when the paint's not being refined down correctly. You can see along there all these ran they're called random deep scratches, so RDS. So you can see them along there. And what they're generally caused by is by catching it of rings or a watch. Um, using water blades, which uh, are not very good. People think they're very efficient, but uh, they're not very good at all. Um, so yeah, we have a few of them. Yeah, just go around the car and mask off any of the plastics or rubbers, anything delicate really. Uh, some of the edges of the bonnet, depending on what level correction you're doing, uh, so you don't uh, strike through. This bit so that as the edge of the pad rolls over there, it just saves a little bit of time cleaning up the um, any rubber or plastics at the end as well. All necessary areas marked up. Tom then decided it was time to start the paint correction process. So he marks off uh, half the bonnet. Uh, this bit isn't just purely to show before and after the correction we've uh, achieved. Um, I do it as well so I can actually then find the product and uh, the compound and pad I need to use and go through very, you may go through five, six, seven uh, combo before you actually find the one you want. So you mask off a section, you have to go through and do it on nearly every panel, so every panel may be different. Um, so that's quite a good way of doing it and then obviously you can show the, um, the correction you've achieved. Focus on the light source. Look directly above it, you'll see it there. See where I mean? Yes, yeah, so we've done a test area, uh, so you can see the level of correction we're going to achieve today. Um, you do this process. Uh, the paint correction is very important, especially the detailing side. Uh, to you're gonna you're leveling the paint, to flattening back the paint. Um, this so you achieve a perfect reflection. So when the light actually hits it, instead of having a like a rippled effect where it'd be scratched, uh, you're making it perfectly flat. So you get the, you get a pure reflection then. So if we come down and have a look at this section, this this section's not actually been uh, machine polished yet. Um, we're actually using a medium cut pad with a, a fine cut polish uh, and then you'll come across to see actually where we've got to. So we've probably achieved somewhere around about an 80% correction and we could keep going further which would take uh, keep us coming into days. Um, so this level will be fantastic for today and then when Andrew comes back for another video we're going to be doing uh, we'll take this even further. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll go around the rest of the car and show you some more more sections we'll be doing. With the metallic nature of the Abbas paint finally coming through, I asked Tom to talk about the different levels of wax available. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got a uh, a collection from Mitch and King on one of their approved detailers, um, ranging from show car waxes, uh, one specifically designed for winter. They're all bespoke and handmade uh, by John. 
Uh, I've got my signature TK wax uh, in a nice crystal jar, which after I've been going for a certain amount of years, I decided to invest in something a bit special just as a, a trophy for myself. Um, it costs a fair bit of money and gives a, a stunning gloss to the paintwork. Durability is not as high, but it's um, a beautiful gloss. Uh, the Carrera in the corner is currently wearing that after having our, signi uh, our TK signature detail, um, which has taken 50 hours to, to be complete. So now there's got two layers of that wax on at the moment. Uh, so we're going to be applying after we've done a single stage machine polish to remove around about 70% of the imperfections. Um, that's had a lot more gloss to the car. Uh, we're going to apply Mitch and King's show car wax. This actually is a winter edition, so it will help protect against road sorts and bits we've got at the moment. And when Andrew pops back in uh, to help me launch a new company I'm going to be doing in about a month's time, um, we'll be putting something special on the car and then ceramic coating it after that. So we're just ready to remove the wax of the car now. Um, curing is very important, so the best thing of applying any wax is to have it applied as fine as possible because uh, actually when you're removing it off the paint um, you're removing less and you're not grabbing as much off as well. Most of that's down to the temperature, um, humidity as well, so in the unit here it's all heated, um, so at the moment it's running 12 degrees and it's 52% humidity, so it's uh, perfect for applying a wax or ceramic coatings. Um, yeah, doing that it means the product's more likely to last the whole time with durability and you'll get an overall better finish. After the wax had been applied and buffed, the wheels needed to be sealed, here using a ceramic coating. So here we're going to use Talon, it's fiber ceramic coating for the wheels. This protects the wheels from break up, build up of brake dust, any road grime, any road salt. This is heat resistant so it can go on the calipers as well as the whole wheel. With the wheels coated, the tyres and engine bay were dressed using more fireball products. Shortly after, work on the interior began. cleaning and then sealing the leather on the mats and finally creating those hallmark stripes. The glass was then cleaned in and out and then protected. We're going to seal the windscreen with Carbon Collective's Platinum Glass Coating. The benefit of that is over speeds of around 40 miles an hour, it completely aids driving visibility, meaning the water beads off over the top of the roof. When this stage was completed, the car was finally finished, so I decided to take advantage of the lighting and get some shots of the now mirror-like sheen. So we're outside again, back into the snow foam, and the detail is finished. And I think it's fair to say that a fairly dramatic improvement has been made across the entire car. As you've seen inside, the wheels have been protected. The paint has been protected with the Michelin King wax. 
We've got a gloss shine, like totally reflective. Looks smooth. And it's even now possible to see the metallic features of it. Okay, so a final conclusion, a final uh, thank you to Tom from TK Detailing. Um, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, you can contact us uh, by going to our website www.tkdetailingcars.co.uk or email us at info at tkdetailingcars.co.uk Great, and what sort of other services do you offer? Uh, we offer everything from a mini detail which is a similar job to what we've done today all the way to full paint correction, um, ceramic coatings, all of our services are bespoke so we tailor to what you really need. The light out here and in there doesn't really do the car justice. This detail has taken five hours and they've gone through all the stages I've just shown you. I'm really, really happy with the results. The car looks stunning. It looks better than it probably did even when it was brand new straight out of the factory. Um, the great guys, so thank you Tom at TK Detailing for all of this amazing work that you've done. So although we're done for today, this isn't actually the last time I'll be working with the guys at TK Detailing. We've got a couple things in the pipeline that should be pretty good and we can make the bar stand out a bit more, personalise it a bit. So I hope you've enjoyed this content. I hope I've depicted the detailing process properly and maybe you've also learned something. So as always, please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, cheers.